Time breathes like a magnet is pulling me To the place where my heart will always be To the banks of the quayside on the time Time bridge, you will always be mine Time bridge, you will always be mine Time bridge, you will always be mine there can't be a greater landmark that symbolises Geordie Land and the River Tyne than the Tyne Bridge. It's recognised all over the world, and to us Geordies, it's a massive symbol of being back home. But how much do you know about the history of the Tyne Bridge and its future? Well, in this video, I'm going to cover 10 amazing things that you probably didn't know about the Tyne Bridge, including dispelling a popular and common myth. Coming up... <laughs> Welcome back, it's Eddie here from Tyneside Life and if you'd love to see more videos about this amazing area whether it's the history, the culture or the football please consider subscribing so you get a notification every time I release a new video It's free! This particular section of the River Tyne that connects Newcastle and Gated is of course famous for the seven bridges and it brings in countless visitors every year I've got no idea how many but I think we're really lucky to have this amazing view and none stands out more than the bridge I'm stood on right now and that's the Tyne Bridge with its unique arch that dominates the skyline For me personally, it brings back a lot of memories from when I was a teenager uh, in my early years in the Air Force when I used to get the train back from RAF Lineham as it slowed down through Gated you'd see the rows upon rows of terraced um, houses with their chimney pots and then as it went across the high level bridge you'd see the castle keep coming to view and then you look to your right and there was the magnificent Tyne Bridge and boy did that make me proud to be a Geordie even though my pals in the Air Force when I was a young teenager I couldn't understand a word I said but in recent years the more I've found that you learn about our rich history I've discovered that it becomes more and more interesting so on that note let's have a look at the 10 things I've discovered about the Tyne Bridge so the main question is why was the Tyne Bridge built? in 1928 the river already had three bridges in this particular location that connected Newcastle and Gated there was the oldest bridge, the high level which was a road and railway the swing bridge which has a road and the King Edward VII Bridge, which is also a railway. In addition to a new generation of motorised vehicles, there was also a, a crippling recession. Coal production had slowed and shipbuilding orders were down with a third of shipyards closing. The building of the Tyne Bridge between 1925 and 1928 provided a partial solution to these problems as the unemployment rate in the area was around 40%. This was assisted with a huge government subsidy. Employing out-of-work shipbuilders, steel workers and coal miners kept Tyneside families out of poverty and helped to retain their skills. Unfortunately, once the bridge was opened in October 1928, that temporary respite ended as we slipped into a global recession and industry continued to decline. Two, who designed and built the Tyne Bridge? In 1924, a bridge committee was formed to discuss the idea of the bridge and the company Dorman, Long and Company won the contract. They were based in Middlesbrough and Ralph Freeman was the consultant engineer from Mott, Hay and Anderson who designed the bridge. In conjunction with the first female to gain entry to the Institute of Civil Engineering in 1927, she was Dorothy Buchanan of Langholm, Dumfrieshire. At the time, Dorm and Long were already preparing to build the Sydney Harbour Bridge, which was completed four years after the Tyne Bridge was opened. The workers didn't use harnesses or helmets and were referred to as the Monkey Men by the daily onlookers. Despite the obvious dangers, only one worker died during its construction, and that was a 33-year-old scaffolder from South Shields called Nathaniel Collins. He fell on the 28th of February 1928, and despite being dragged out of the river, and rushed to the Newcastle Infirmary, he died of his injuries unfortunately. On its 90th birthday in 2018, over 90 female engineers from across the country gathered in Newcastle to celebrate the 90th anniversary of the opening of the Tyne Bridge and the female engineer behind the design. 3. How much do you know about its construction? Well, the bridge is a two-hinged, single-span, through-arch bridge with the hinges on each bank and the casing foundations are sunk 90 feet into the riverbanks. It was quite unique at the time and needed to be free of obstructions to the river. For example, navigational obstructions, river piers and any construction materials raised from the river. 
It was built from either side of the river using steel cables to support the arches until it met at the middle. It was originally painted with three coats of special paint by J. Dampney & Co. of Gateshead. Its original outer coat was superlative middle green. Over the decades it has been painted British standard green called Hollybush. And for a couple of decades it was even painted blue. It does need painting every decade and it has 400,000 cubic feet of concrete and the towers are faced with Cornish granite. The Tyne Bridge is now a Grade 2 listed building due to its architectural and historical interest. The bridge originally formed part of the old Year 1 that connected the south to Scotland. And did you know that it was used for trams up until 1950? 4. So how big is the Tyne Bridge? Well it's 1276 feet long which is slightly longer than the Empire State Building is tall and is one and a half times longer than St James's Park. At its tallest point it's 193 feet above the river and it uses 7,122 tonnes of steel. Despite this the Tyne Bridge is tiny compared to the Sydney Harbour Bridge which took another four years to complete. 5. Did you know the Germans tried to blow it up in World War II? It was around 5.30pm in broad daylight on the 2nd of July 1940 when a small party of German Luftwaffe Dornier 17 bombers flew down the Tyne. A Royal Observer Corps spotter at the D2 lookout post in Kenton saw them and raised the alarm. One of the plane dropped its payload and there were two explosions, clearly meant for the Tyne Bridge. The bombs missed narrowly but one hit Spiller's old flour mill on the Newcastle Quayside. It killed 13 people in the raid including several children and 123 were injured. 6. The four concrete towers were to be used as warehouses but never were. Now they are home to about a thousand pairs of nesting kittiwake birds and these are a protected species. I'm going to do a separate video about the towers and warehouse as I'm sorting out access to film so I'll deliberately skip the detail on this one. 7. Did you know that this is not the first Tyne Bridge? The first one was built by the Romans around 120 AD and was called Pons Aelius meaning Bridge of Hadrian. This was replaced in the 13th century by the old stone medieval bridge with arches that had buildings on it. The Great Flood destroyed a large section of this in 1771 and was replaced by the stone Georgian bridge and this lasted around 70 years before being replaced by the Swing Bridge in 1876. 8. It took three years to build the Tyne Bridge and during that time between 1925 and 1928 Alexander Fleming discovered penicillin and did you know Newcastle United last won the league title and that was in 1927. 9. And this one I'm going to dispel a myth. The bridge was opened on the 10th of October 1928 by George V and his wife Queen Mary with a large procession. Thousands of people came to view the ceremony including 2,000 children who had been allowed off school that day. There's a popular belief that the Tyne Bridge and Sydney Harbour Bridge were modelled on each other. Although they're very similar to each other with the same designers and builders, they didn't copy each other. Both bridges were in fact inspired by Hellgate Bridge in New York, which was opened a few years earlier. And lastly, number 10, you can probably see the Tyne Bridge is now well overdue a refurbishment and work is due to start next year. This is going to take approximately four years and will hopefully be ready for its centenary celebrations. The total cost is going to be over 40 million with most of this coming from central government. Unfortunately that means it's going to be down to two lanes for that duration. There are a few complications as you would expect and one of them being how to rehome the kitty wakes during the refurbishment. It's also expected that long barrier spikes will be added to hinder those unfortunately wanting to jump off it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Leave your comments below uh, on your thoughts about the Tyne Bridge and it getting done up over the next four years. And uh, in the meantime, why don't you check this video out? Because I think you'll find it really interesting. Till next time. It fills us with pride. From Gateshead to Newcastle goes the landmark we all know is home. Bridges, there's a few to see, but not many do what you do to me. It makes me heart beat in me chest. Big and bold, you are the best, you are the best. Time bridge like a magnet is pulling me, to the place where me heart will always be. To the banks of the key set on the time, time bridge you will always be mine. Time bridge you will always be mine, time bridge you will always be mine.